evening, Grimsby! Ticket last night. Everybody, Ket Johansson here on the Ket Johansson show. I'm here at Evo Wrestling Academy's breakout show for our new documentary series. We've got Liam on it, we've got Jack Maxwell, and we've got head academy coach Nathan Cruz. Enjoy. I'm here now with Evo Academy student Jack Maxwell. Jack, thank you for coming on, being part of the documentary. Let's talk about your journey. I know you started originally with NGW, you've trained with Myers, you've trained with Cruz for some time, you find yourself here at Evo. What's that journey been like for you? Because it's been a long road and we're here at Evo Breakout. Long road, six years, training week in, week out of the bridge at the NGW Academy. It took me three of those six years just to get an opportunity on a show and I can't help but feel like as soon as I started to establish myself, as soon as I started to feel like a fit on their roster, pandemic hit, the world closed its doors. Only the thing is with NGW, they decided to never reopen them. So that brings me over here, across south of the bridge to BWR and Evo specifically. I know with my friendship with Nathan, like he didn't know if he'd be doing this. He didn't know if he'd be training again. What was that like for you? Your academy's just closed down. You don't know if there's going to be another opportunity again over here with Evo. What was your mindset like? Because you've been training all those years to get so close and it all to be taken away. Yeah, there was part of me that thought we'd, we'd never even get back into this situation again. Obviously... Uh, professional wrestling, the, the, the very nature of it, as close contact as it is, doing that in a world of social distancing and keeping two metres, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think we'd even get to this point, but, but thank God we have, and, and thank God that, uh, you know, BWR was there to, to open the door. Definitely, and for people that are listening to this, what's it like life as a trainee, because it's one thing if you do sports in football or if you do rugby. Professional wrestling, if you are going to make a career out of it, you have to change your full life to it. How have you adapted? Like, What were some of your biggest barriers when you were trying to find yourself in wrestling? I think for me, thankfully, I've, uh, I've come from a sporting background. I played rugby for a couple of years, so I felt like naturally I had a little bit of a head start. Um, in comparison to people who may have never played a sport before or may have never been big on physical fitness who decided to jump headfirst into it. But for sure it is the most difficult thing that I've ever done. It is the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. Um, and I think people, they think it's easy to, to become a professional wrestler. They think it's easy to train and it's you come down on a Wednesday night at Evo, you will see it's, it's far, far from that. So on Wednesday shows, you've got Nathan Cruz, but again, you've also trained under Matt Myers. For people that was going to come to Evo, what can you expect from both of those trainers? What have you learned best from Matt? What have you learned best from Nathan? So even though it's well documented that Nathan and uh, Matty are best friends, I think they're very different trainers. I think... Nathan has this intensity about him, which I think is is really good and it's really helpful. He's a, very much got this all or nothing attitude. Uh, Matty is a little bit more laid back in comparison to that, but that doesn't mean to say that Matty won't push you hard as well. I've found the biggest takeaway I would say with Nathan has been more the the psychology side of wrestling. Um, as opposed to just these are moves that we do um, more thinking uh, why we do said moves and when's the right time to do said moves uh, whereas for me Matty was a little bit more of a basic trainer in terms of making, making sure things do uh, done safely and stuff like that 
I think it's a good setup the way you mentioned. Matt is a little bit more laid back. Nathan yeah. is all or nothing. Yeah. And the fact that Matt, again, fundamentally is as good as anybody in the yeah. UK. Yeah, yeah. And he's getting them ready in the beginner level. Yes. But then when you step up and you go into Nathan's classes, that is when it's that class, then you're on shows. Yeah. So do you think that helps with his all or nothing mentality of like, look, there's no playing around now. You're not no, here to play yeah. a wrestler. You're here to be a professional I've wrestler. I found that to be a huge jump when I moved from the beginner sessions to the advanced sessions back at MGW. I had got to a point where I started to feel confident in the basics. And then as soon as I stepped foot into the advanced, I was like... I felt like I was way over my head. I felt like I wasn't good enough to be there. Um, maybe that comes down to a little bit of self-confidence issues. But eventually, through Nathan's guidance, he clearly saw something in me right from the beginning, which I'm really, really grateful for. Um, I can see some of the similarities, I think, with maybe that intimidation or the aggression that you've got is a lot like Nathan, especially younger Nathan. We've seen the evolution of Nathan's characters and... Do you think having somebody like that with such character work has helped you mould who you are? Like, who is Jack Maxwell? 100% I feel like that has helped. Jack Maxwell is a guy who just wanted opportunity. He just wanted to get that match and to get booked on shows. And time and time and time again, it was taken away from him. Time and time and time again, someone else jumped the queue and got in front of him. And then, like I said before, just as I feel like I'm starting to get there, NGW shuts down and there's no sign of it ever reopening it as, as of this day. <coughs> I then come over to BWR expecting it to be a clean slate and it's the same again. Undergrounds come, undergrounds go, youth and revolt comes, youth and revolt goes, and Jack Maxwell is nowhere to be seen. So Eva is the place where I really need to stamp my authority. And to be honest, nothing short of winning the Evo Championship will be good enough for me right now. Huge statement. So you've got your match tonight. You finally locked you sat finally set free from the pandemic. You're finally getting that opportunity to prove yourself. What's your thought process going into today's show? Making statements like that, I know I put the ultimate pressure on myself. I have to win tonight. I can't start my BWR, my Evo career with a loss. It just cannot happen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to win this match tonight. We've got the tournament coming up. Yep. What's your thought process going into that? What if you don't get into the tournament? What if you don't advance to the final and be that champion? What if you're not that breakout star? The way that Evo has gone so far, and the way that BWR management has treated me so far, it honestly would not surprise me if they were too afraid to put me in this tournament. If they had any real guts about them, they would put me in the tournament. And I will prove to them, I will win the quarterfinal match, I will win the semi-final match, and I will win the final, and I will give the See me on the last few shows here doing what Lucy's doing tonight with the ring announcer. Yeah. I think we can all agree that Lucy should be doing this, definitely. So, I've done all that. It's brought me to this point. I've trained, I've worked my fingers to the bone at the Evo Academy to come here tonight and get my spot in that breakout rumble. And believe me, when I get out here later, there's going to be me, there's going to be nine other entrants, and I am going to be tossing them out left and right. I am going to earn that spot and I am going to get that buy in the championship tournament because there is nothing, nothing that will mean more to me than to be the first ever EVO heavyweight champion.
I don't know what this is about. Shut your mouth. Sir. Now joined by Liam Vujicic. Liam, thank you for coming on. So you're here today. It's Evo breakout. What's your what's your thoughts process going into today? Not much, really. To be fair, it's just a fight. It's just a fight. Yeah, um, I don't really overcomplicate it with anything else, like the whole gear, because my gear's literally just white. So <laughs> nothing else. I've just got the checked white, and that's about it. Um, yeah, I don't mess about, it's just all business, it's a fight, and I'm here to win yeah. Brilliant. Is tonight going to be your first match um, in front of a live audience? Had you been wrestling before the pandemic? No, nope. very first match. Obviously, you've done a lot of training before, um, but as of right now, I feel completely ready. Yeah? This, but, uh, how do you think you'll react to that live audience again? We've got over 100 people here at the Evo show. Well, that's the thing, when you fight, it's weird. The audience, you know how when you go underwater, it sort of, everything sounds like a blur on yep. the outside. So when you actually fight, you don't really notice it. Okay. Without that sound, it's disrespectful. But, you know, it's, it shouldn't really be a problem. It should just be like training. Does that mean you're going to be tunnel visioned when you're coming down to the ring, locking everything out, just focusing on your opponent? Because, again, in your words, you're just here to fight. Yeah, good idea. What made you join the Evo Academy? Like, how did you get started in thinking, I'm going to be a professional wrestler, I want to fight for a living? Well, it started in a hole. Uh, then Covid happened, so that place hasn't reopened, so I had to find the next closest place. Um, Nathan, who originally trained me and my estate, moved over to Grimsby, so I just decided to follow three months. What was it like when you first started training? How did you find jumping into the world of wrestling? Had you done any sports previously? Because it is a big culture shock and it's something you've got to do 24-7. I think the difference is, is that I've had experience actually in combat sports, so it's, it's not a real difference. It is different, but which well, I'm not like coming from completely no fitness background or yeah. anything like that. I know what I'm doing when it comes to training, and definitely know what I'm doing when it comes to fighting, so it's just my usual life, really. What other fighting backgrounds do you come from? Boxing, karate, I currently do karate, I'm a blue belt in karate, uh, making my way to purple as of right now. So. Um, and just that's about it really um, so I already know my way around the ropes when it comes to ring boxing um, yeah this is definitely different but I think plenty of experience in the back of my hand as how, to wrestling, really. how do you bring that into your professional wrestling do we see some of your karate do we see some of your boxing style um, it's not I'm not like one of those guys who let's say does like taekwondo and comes into wrestling and just does kicks yeah. like, because that's to me that's stupid. For you to be a professional wrestler, you have to be a pro wrestler. So when I say boxing comes into wrestling, I'm not talking about footwork and actual uh, ring knowledge, ring awareness, and movement. Not actual like I'm going to go in there and start doing all this stuff because that doesn't work in this world. <laughs> 
So, what have you learned best from uh, Myers from Cruz again? You was training with them elsewhere before the pandemic, you're now here in Evo. What are your biggest takeaways of those as your coaches? My coaches, like, well, they taught me from scratch. Again, wrestling, um, boxing, you sort of know if you fight, like, like the outside of the ring, so you kind of get the idea. But wrestling, you don't know until you're in there. And Nathan and Myers just taught me from scratch, uh, built me up, and gave me inspirations to look at and study from. Because, you know, I even thought, so I thought about this myself, and they led me in the right direction. And now this is where it's all led up to now. Very much. Brilliant. And yeah, we're here. Over 100 people are going to be in attendance. What's your goals in wrestling? What's your goals within EVO, within BWR? What can you expect from you? Just to go as far as I can go. Whether that be winning championships or whether I'm just turning up the shows and doing the best I can. There's nothing more I can ask for, really. And championships aren't really a big deal to me. It's, you know, I'm just doing this to live. That's all. Nothing else. Championship is just bonus. Do you think that makes you dan more dangerous, the fact that you love to fight, you are doing it to live, you're not just out there to try and seek the fame and glory? Oh, yeah. Well, you just have to look at my gear and, you know, that pretty much says it. You know, I'm just, I'm just very simple with it. You know, it's all, it's all business. I'm able to fight. And that's it. When I lose, when I smash it. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling sorry for your opponent and it's not going to be long until it is time for you to fight. So Liam, thank you for joining and good luck with your future with Evo. students backstage today are making their first ever appearance. They've had the foresight to come to myself and Matt Myers, who of course are second to none. So they wanted to train with the best wrestlers in the UK, so they came to our Evo school, and today they're getting to realise their dreams come true. So for all of you, I want you to enjoy this show, but most of all, please support them, because it's a very nerve-wracking experience. And uh, yeah, get involved, enjoy yourselves, make some noise. Because the more noise you make, the harder their fight or something like that it goes. I was told once upon a time. But yeah, just enjoy the show guys and please show your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm here with head trainer of the EVO Academy, Nathan Cruz. Nathan. Thank you for letting me do this project with um, EVO for yourself. It's a new chapter. Um, in your life is a professional wrestling coach. Tell us about the academy, like how did you become the head trainer of EVA? Um, I did, well they contacted me uh, just as lockdown was starting to ease last year uh, about this opportunity and I had a good track record as the head trainer of the NGW school in Hull. Um, Marty had had a good relationship with them and it just kind of snowballed from there. And for me personally it's been a new lease of life, like being able to really commit and dive into something a bit more seriously here, like my, my role's a bit more, uh, it's a bit higher up than it was at the NGW Academy, I'm making a bit more decisions on things that are taking place. And things like this is just so exciting, like the first ever show, like it takes me back 16 years when I had my first ever match and those same nerves, but to help them, guide them and get over, like, give them the guidance that I didn't have when I was that young and that inexperienced and to, to offer them that. And, See how enthusiastic a lot of them are today, and I'm just I'm thrilled for them all. I genuinely am. You said your roles changed slightly, and again, you as the lead coach with NGW, you're here as the head trainer of Evo. What are those new responsibilities that you're having to task in? Like with these academy shows, is it like the promoter's hat? Has that come on? Or? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> I got here today, and Adam was like, "Nephew, you've done a run card." I'm like, "What's that?" <laughs> no, obviously I know what a run card is, but I've, I've never had to do those things, I've never had to think about the timings and all these things, which matches going on where and why and things like that. So yeah, it's a new experience for me and uh, and I like it, but obviously anything that's involved in professional wrestling, I like 
getting focused on and, and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting, different chapter, new challenge for me. For those that fans or even potential trainee um, in the future, what can they expect if they came to EVO training under yourself, training under Matt Myers? What can they expect from joining the EVO Academy and what do you represent? It, you'd see a clear path of how you're going to make it to a show. And that was kind of when me and Matty was piecing this together with Adam. It was kind of our whole philosophy was like, when we've done training in the past, when we, me and Matty started, it was like, okay, we do this, but we don't know when we may actually get on show. Like, here there's a clear path, so you have that. Uh, first of all, we have our 12-week 12 ye- 12 beginner course that you do with Matty. And if you do well enough in that, you can join the intermediate forward slash advanced class with myself. And the main thing that I ask of them all is just show me the effort. That's the thing. I don't have time for time wasters. Uh, if you if you're not if you're coming to me to start training with a list of excuses as to why you can't do something, well, you, <laughs> good luck at trying to make it in this this business because it's a tough business. And um, yeah, I just I think that's the main thing. I ask everybody to just show me that effort. Show me because there's a lot of people who want these spots and there's only so many limited ones. So. You show me the effort that you want this, and I can reward that and work with you and coach you, no pun intended, on, um, on, on the direction that I feel that you need to help get your, your career started. And a lot of these lads here today have definitely done that and taken those lessons as well, and I guess that's why I'm so excited to see the debut of some of them. Yeah, definitely. And in, in the like talent call earlier, and you did the rundown of the show, and you told them about how much it takes to be a professional wrestler and I think some people do think oh, I just go training once a week talk about like the expectations of a trainee and what they should be doing those other days that they're not here training like the lifestyle has to change if you're going to become a professional wrestler yeah exactly that like to me at least with our program for my intermediate advanced class it's three hours in one week it's nothing do you know what I mean? Like that's where we. The rest of the time is when you go away and you study wrestling and you say, "Oh, that's what Nathan or Matty or Dean or Liam were talking about." It's right there, and they're like, so you take notes and then you be able to come back to the, the class the next week and whatever subjects that I'm teaching at that time, we you may be able to incorporate those things, and then I can critique that. And then it's all those things about changing the, that lifestyle and clearly putting in the work in the gym. I mean, it, it's one of them things to me that. You, whether you want to be, you don't have to be a giant, but you have to look like, you have to be an athlete. This is an athletic thing that we do. So put in that commitment to, to eating right and, and going to the gym, show that you're wanting to come and help out at shows and show that you're actually enthusiastic about wanting to get involved in this because it's still a privilege. You know, I know the job's changed a lot since way back in the 70s and 80s and it was very guarded but to get in back then that was the only way you could you'd show up and try and help put some chairs out and hopefully they may take you in the ring and kick your head in for about five minutes <laughs> we've moved on from that but I still think there's some of those old school principles of how difficult it is to get into the job should still be respected and should like you should still honour that and that's why I think there's those expectations of like you know, I, I don't want to see people getting late, getting arriving here late with the excuse of oh, I had to do some shopping. Uh, I had, oh, I've got held up in traffic. Like, held up in traffic happens, but you know, allow some time ahead of it. You know, I was taught if you're 15 minutes early, you're late, and I think that's a very good mindset to have because you're allowing yourself that time to get stuck in traffic or anything like that. But yeah, just you know, essentially, just shows that you do want it um, and why do you, you know what what's going to say say like out there today? I've got. 10 students well, what am I? You know, out of all these 10 there was some that I haven't made on the show so I would say 15 students you've got to show me why I need to be selecting you and maybe even putting you in a match or am I just putting you in a segment or am I just saying let's leave it for this one do you know what I mean and sometimes that can literally be the difference of you're both working really hard but this person's gone that extra mile that I feel like I have to reward that over you who's just sat there concentrating once a week and that's yeah definitely your mentality is one of the things and you've proven to be a successful trainer in the past we've seen the success that Lucas Steele had Reese and Rogan Ace Matthews where they've been getting bookings from outside their academy they've been winning titles not in their home promotion what do you do in terms of networking for your talent to try and make sure it's one thing wrestling for your home promotion in this academy environment the pressure's on, there's over 100 people that have bought tickets to this show. Mm. But what do you do to set them, to make them ready to, to be working these other promotions where they might not have you to hold the hand? 
I, honestly, I sink or swim in those situations. I kind of say, like, you know, like I've given you all the tools to go out there and fend for yourself, but I can only do so much. You can say, like you said, I can't hold the hand all the time. And it was a big part of my learning experience. I didn't always have people there watching, my, watching over my shoulder to make sure I was taken care of. I just had to sometimes jump on a plane and hope they treat me okay in France, you know? <laughs> like, those things happen and you get, but it's character building, it makes you a better person. So in some senses, I'm quite strict in that. And I'll just go, well, let me know how it goes. Send me a copy of the match. I'll give you feedback on that, but everything else, and it's on you. And I'll, I'll definitely speak to people. I say, if they're on a show with a wrestler I've known for a bunch of years, I, I want to know how, how was my student? Did they was they respectful? Did they offer to help out? Was you know, were they a pain? They didn't try and change anything. Was just did their job. Did where they were professional, essentially, you know. And then um, as long as they were, like I'm, I'm happy with that. That's all I can really ask of them is that. They conduct themselves as a professional and do the job that's asked of them and uh, make a good impression. And that's all I really say to them is, you know, as long as you make a good impression, you work hard, there's no real reason for someone to not want to bring you back if you're, as long as your ability is there. Yeah. So just, you know, don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, Evo, it's got the connections with BWR. What's that stepping stone for people to get into one of the hottest British wrestling companies at the moment? Um, well, that's, uh, that, going back to how you said about the, the training, that's the good thing of what we have. You have that beginner's course, you have the intermediate to advance, you have these academy shows. And if you do well on them academy shows, you know, Adam's here and the, the certain other people are here who will help book those shows that can go, oh, actually, maybe on those underground shows we could use this person and give them an opportunity. And it happened for one of our students, Ant Man Dan, uh, just at the end of last year, he got a spot, and I was so pleased for him to do a main show and he was so excited and he owned every second that he was out there and for me as his trainer to watch that I was like overwhelmed for him um, and I, I think that's it is then you know then that well if I can get to underground shows eventually I'll have to get on to the main VWR shows and be considered for more you know where the storylines may be going it's like oh actually we might need someone for this that person's done quite well and that's where they can come in and um, I just think that's a very exciting uh, opportunity for them to, to aim towards. I think that's the main thing. Like everybody needs something to aim towards. I know it's something that I've sometimes struggled with myself when I've kind of been in limbo, not knowing direction. I'm like, oh, what do I do? To to give those students always something to achieve for to get to that next level, to get to that next level. You know, because nobody's just going to go to a wrestling school and then the next thing get signed by WWE or AEW or Impact or, or any of the or New Japan. You have to have a progression. You have to have these little stepping stones, and I, I see that the way we've kind of structured this is a great example of how you should kind of look at your wrestling career as little stepping stones to get to your main goal. Brilliant. And again, you mentioned earlier, but for those that have listened to this, they're interested in getting started. How can they sign up to join the Evo Academy? Uh, just search for the Evo Wrestling Academy uh, online. You'll find it. Big green logo. Uh, it's based out of Grimsby. Beginners course you can sign up for if you're uh, somebody who's trained elsewhere and you've got a bit of injury experience and you fancy giving my sessions a go. We run every Wednesday night from 7 to 10 pm, so you're more than welcome to come along. Um, and yeah, just again show me that effort, don't have any excuses. <laughs> Brilliant, Nathan, thank you. No, thanks, Ken.